We're out here at a small impoundment in LaFleur County. Uh, this impoundment has been recently drained, giving us the unique opportunity to come out here and evaluate the existing fish habitat. Uh, this lake was impounded in 1937, and over that time, there's been a lot of habitat put into this lake. And with it being drawn down, we're able to kind of evaluate the existing habitat that was here when the lake was impounded. Uh, habitat we've added since then, right now in about four foot of water uh, if the lake was up. And we can really see where the stumps are, where the hard rock is, where our drop-offs are, those areas where these fish might really hold really tight to and might be improved if we put a little bit more habitat in here in terms of cedar trees, maybe some spider blocks, something that gives those fish something to suspend over top of or maybe go into and escape from predation. Right here along the stream bank, uh, we've got a stump that's probably been here since the lake was impounded, a little bit before that. Obviously, it's, it used to be a pretty big tree, probably as big as the ones that are there behind me. After a number of years though, the habitat here is degraded. It's not providing a lot of beneficial uses for fish compared to new habitat that can be added in the form of cedar trees or other habitat structures such as spider blocks. So what we've got here is a brush pile that we just installed using simply three or four people, a couple pine trees, uh, smaller ones if you have them, or you can just lop the tops off of uh, bigger ones. We made a really nice brush pile for fish to uh, congregate around, kind of keep them in an area that's going to increase the ability of anglers to catch them. Uh, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of open space here. Once this lake fills up, these will be in about three to eight feet of water and that will provide a really great opportunity for both anglers on a boat to come up and fish it as well as anyone from shore. But with these brush piles here, we selected trees that have some pretty good branching, some bigger branches so that they'll last a little bit longer, but enough that has some spacing in there for the fish to hide. With your brush piles, we set ours on normally a three to five year rotation. We're doing some bigger lakes, some smaller lakes, a little bit of everything in between. Um, one key uh, metric to look at is how effective you are at catching fish over them. If you notice that you're not catching as many as you used to, uh, but your pond seems fine, uh, you're still seeing a lot of fish, it's probably time to replace your brush piles. Uh, a lot of times that four to six years is, is kind of that sweet spot. Um, you can't really have too much habitat. Uh, so if every time you go out in the winter, cut some cedars, maybe you're expanding some of your pasture, reclaiming some of that land, put some habitat in, just drag them over your pond, throw them in. So as you can see, this lake bed behind me is pretty barren. There's not a lot of habitat, not a lot to hold the fish, which is why we put in those brush piles that you just saw a few minutes ago. It's important to refurbish your brush piles, and this is the reason why. This brush pile here has been over here for a little over five years. Uh, we've got about eight cedar trees that are probably approximately 10 feet in length, maybe up to 15. So as you can see, even after five years, they still have a decent amount of branching that's gonna hold some fish close to them and provide some angling success. Any smaller than this, and those trees will quickly degrade, fall into the lake bottom uh, and your detritus layer, all that muck that builds up, and not provide much quality habitat uh, for the fishes in your pond. Compared to those brush piles we saw just a second ago, you might be able to see in the background there where they're a little bit bigger. This is why we don't want to use small cedar trees or Christmas trees uh, for pond habitat. They're pretty insignificant uh, within about a year. As you can see uh, right here, this tree, it's got really thin branches. Uh, there's not a lot of that uh, small spacing that the forage fish need, and there's not too much of, of those bigger branches that those other larger fish like your crappie, your bass might kind of cruise around and hang tight too. Uh, you can see already their cinder blocks have melted into kind of that bottom muck layer and there, there's just no habitat value. Same with this pile here where we've got about three or four uh, smaller cedar trees. There's barely anything here to hold those fish uh, to here. So you might be able to pull a fish off or two, a fish or two off here um, for a year, but you're gonna have to replace that brush pile so quickly, it's just gonna be a lot of work. A lot of that time would be better spent cutting a couple bigger trees, getting them sunk out in the lake that you can enjoy for a couple years before having to refurbish them.
So behind us, uh, we have some permanent spire blocks. Uh, these are some plastic piping. We use quick creek to cement them in. We augered a hole about two feet down, stuck those pipes in, put that quick creek on top of it to fill that hole. Uh, they'll draw in moisture as the lake fills and from the, the sediments um, and set that concrete. And the really nice thing about this is it acts just the same as a cedar tree. It's got that branching by this orange pipe, it provides a place to concentrate those fish uh, where anglers can get to them, but also in an area that's suitable to the fish. Uh, as you can see over here, we've got uh, some really dense structures where it's placed closer together. And then some areas over here, over my shoulder, where they're spread out a little bit more. That provides a variety of habitat for the fish, depending what fish uh, you're putting them out there for. And as you can see on this side, we cut down a lot of the cattails. This makes easy access so that if you've got small children um, that can't cast very far, they can still cast to good habitat that's going to hold fish. It's going to increase their angling success, makes it easier on everyone. Um, and that's something you want to take, think about when you're putting habitat in your pond. Uh, you might want to put it in some deeper water some, someplace way out in the pond, but that's going to be harder to get to. So if you want just to go down to your pond real quick, catch a couple fish, have a good time, consider putting some of that habitat in an area that's really close to the shoreline where you have easy access. So whether you're refurbishing the existing pond or putting in a new impoundment, always make sure to put in some new fish habitat uh, in your pond. It'll help hold those fish there, uh, make better fishing for you and any others who may visit. Three takeaways would be to pile up several uh, pieces of structure in one area, gives it that habitat diversity. Second would be to put your structures in a variety of water depths so that no matter the time of year, the fish always have good habitat and you have good habitat to fish. And the third would be to make sure it's accessible to the angler. You wanna make sure that you can get to that uh, to have angling success. And then of course, always come back every few years to refurbish your woody uh, structures to make sure they haven't degraded and are still holding fish.